the Ash Valley in Hertfordshire. The River Ash, a rare and precious chalk river, rises in the north of the county, flowing southwest for over 20 kilometres until it joins the River Lee near Ware. It has its origins in rain which fell weeks or even months ago. This rain soaked down into the chalk rock and was stored underground as groundwater in the chalk aquifer before bubbling up as crystal clear springs. Despite its beauty, the river ash faces many threats. Hearts and Middlesex Wildlife Trust are working to try and help tackle these threats by bringing together the River Ash Catchment Partnership. Join me for a journey up the river to meet some members of this partnership and to see what's being done to help improve the river. We start our journey at the bottom of the river where it meets the larger River Lee on the edge of Amwell Nature Reserve. This former gravel pit, managed by Hearts and Middlesex Wildlife Trust, supports internationally important numbers of wintering wildfowl, along with many other species of birds, dragonflies and damselflies. Nature reserves like Amwell are incredibly important for wildlife, but conservation organisations are realising that for conservation to really be effective, we need to think bigger. Most of our landscape is not included in nature reserves, so we need to think about what happens in this wider countryside. We need to work with farmers, landowners and statutory organisations to tackle the threats facing our wildlife. Rivers flow, they join, they interconnect. What happens upstream will have impacts downstream. What happens on fields bordering the river will affect the river itself. We really do need to take a landscape or catchment approach. Moving upstream from Amwell, we come to the Easney estate. Here, the river has been modified historically by weirs and fords. Weirs such as this one cause a number of problems for rivers. They back up the water upstream, causing deep, ponded sections and covering the gravel riverbed with silt. This kills any fish eggs or invertebrates that were living in the gravel. Now imagine you're a fish trying to swim upstream to find an area to spawn in. And suddenly, your journey is blocked by a weir. Disaster. But things can be done about physical modifications like these. Recently, the Environment Agency carried out a project here to notch the weir. They also put some gravel riffles back upstream, where the original gravel had been removed by dredging. Thanks to the Environment Agency's project, if you're a fish, you can now swim upstream through the weir and find somewhere to spawn. Travelling upstream, we reach Waters Place Farm. In parts of this section, the river was moved in the 19th century to make room for a railway. This new channel is much straighter than the original, removing any variation in flow speed and channel depth, which in natural river systems would create all sorts of microhabitats for various species. To combat this, a series of deflectors have been installed. These are formed from tree trunks staked in place, sticking out at an angle facing upstream. They force the river to flow around them, speeding up the flow and scouring out the riverbed, removing silt and creating small pools. Over time, they'll trap silt and vegetate up, becoming part of the riverbank and helping to form a new, narrower, more winding channel. The Buxton family has lived in and farmed this river valley for decades. 
their wildlife-friendly approach to farming and their love of the river has helped make this a truly living landscape. I met up with Henry Buxton and his son Nicholas to ask them about their river. Good. So Henry, you've lived by the river for 50 years. Um... We have, over 50 years. Aren't we lucky? You are. You know, it's a really pretty valley and we've got wonderful wildlife here. We've got the kingfishers and now we've got the egrets. Okay. And we haven't had those for, uh, uh, for very long, but we've also got lots of barn owls, so that's even better. But there are some nasties right. in that uh, we get had mink, but fortunately I think they've gone. But we do get these American crayfish. Yes. And um, they are no, not helpful, as you know, with the river undermining the banks and so on, eating the fish eggs. But overall, we're just extremely lucky yeah. and uh, it's a lovely environment. Fantastic. Um, and Nicholas, you farm the, the valley. How do you make sure that your farming practices don't impact on the river? Well, it's something we take very seriously. Um, uh, a while ago, we, we joined the Higher Level Stewardship Scheme. Uh, and that involved putting buffer strips on either side of the riverbank um, to prevent any spillage of fertilizers into the stream. Um, and that's a very nice environment for the barn owls um, and the kingfishers to use as well. And I believe you've recently done a restoration project in the channel itself, is that right? We have, yes, with the Environment Agency and the Hearts of Middlesex and the Wild Trout Trust. We've put some deflectors in the stream just a little way downstream from here, uh, which have allowed the current to move in a more winding pattern which creates areas of fast water and areas of slow water, which is suitable for the different life stages of the trout. So it works very well. Great. Well, thank you, Nicholas. Thank you, Henry. Not at all. A pleasure. Continuing upstream, we come to the parish of Widford. Here, a river restoration project is ongoing, funded by the Environment Agency and managed by Hearts and Middlesex Wildlife Trust. Rob, when you finish cutting that branch back to the trunk, can you remove the one on the other side and then that's everything? I'm here today with Andy Gardner, who's the director of AG Tree Care, who are carrying out some of the restoration work here on the river. Um, Andy, can you tell me a bit more about what you're doing today? Yeah, we're doing um, uh, some tree work on behalf of the River Ash Restoration Project. Um, the group that you've chosen here is, well, it's got some trees to come out. Uh, there's a tree that we're going to be lifting the crown on um, and we're also going to be filling one of them into the river. OK, so um, it's the crown lifting and the removal is to let light. That's the right. Yeah, yeah, so um, that will let the light directly through to the area. And the tree that we're going to fill into the, the water is going to create sort of woody debris to help hopefully build up the bank around that so that we get uh, new plants and things on there. Okay, so, so the light will encourage bankside plants and in-channel plants, things that's like right. water crow foot. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Okay. And then by filling the tree into the water, and we actually secure it in the water with pins and, and wire it up so it doesn't actually move, um, and then the sediment then will catch on that. Okay, so that'll speed up the flow and scour out the bed and exactly. expose the gravel. Yeah, and it'll also give somewhere for new you know, water plants and things to grow on the other okay. side. Yeah. yeah. So it's a horrible December day, um, why are you doing the work now? Um, all of our tree work um, in these sorts of projects is carried out through the winter months. Um, we just avoid any disturbance to wildlife, nesting birds within the trees and on the banks as well. So okay. um, yeah, all the cold days we're by the rivers. Thanks Andy, we'll leave you to get on with the work now. No problem, you're welcome. <laughs> But physical restoration work, although valuable, can have little effect on pollution. Here on the ash, potential sources of pollution are runoff from fields, vehicles passing through fords, and nearby sewage treatment works. A volunteer-led scheme called Riverfly Monitoring enables volunteers to keep a regular check on water quality on the river. Local volunteers Jonathan and Janine have been trained in how to carry out riverfly monitoring and they regularly sample the ash. Yeah. 
Oh, what is it that you're doing here? Uh, we're monitoring the river here, so we began by going into the river, finding a stony bed area where we did a kick sample for three minutes into the net and then brought the net over here and tipped that out as you can see. A lot of stones, but in amongst all the stones, a good selection of invertebrates. Great, so what sort of things are you looking for? Uh, we're looking for gamarus, which are water shrimps, which we're bringing out and putting in here, and uh, caddis larvae and um, mayfly larvae and um, the tiny little olives and that will that will um, tell us how uh, polluted or unpolluted the water is at the moment we think it's quite good but um, we've only just started doing this so we need to do it on a monthly basis right. basically it's just a question of keeping an eye on everything in the river checking it once a month to see uh, if there's any drop in levels of the creatures that might indicate pollution or if uh, there's an increase which obviously shows the river's in a healthy state so shall we have a close look at what you've got? Yes. So what's this? So this one is a um, gamorous water shrimp. Um, Which, as got, you can see, are very common. We've got quite a few common. of those, yeah. We've got um, some mayfly larvae. There's one here. We've got mayfly larvae. Yeah, yeah, which is easily identifiable by its three tails. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's that compartment there. So we've got um, quite a few of those. What's this here? And that is a, a, caddis, a, ca a case caddis, and the, the, the case caddis is actually inside, and it's built a case around it um, from the from the, the debris here that okay. is found on the on the on the stream. Fantastic! Well, it's um, it sounds like a great way to monitor the health of the river and um, and detect any pollution. So certainly, <laughs> and it's very enjoyable. <laughs> All the people we've met are members of the Ash Catchment Partnership, which is being coordinated by Hearts and Middlesex Wildlife Trust. The partnership meets regularly to discuss aims and objectives for the river and suggest projects to help improve the river and help it reach good ecological status. These projects have been gathered together to form the Ash Catchment Management Plan, which can be found online. This process is also happening for all the rivers in the Lee catchment, helping to create a living landscape for Hertfordshire. We've finished our journey up the lower part of the River Ash, from Amwell to Woodford, and seen how farmers, landowners, statutory bodies and volunteers can work together as a catchment partnership to help build a living landscape. I'm excited to see what the future holds for the River Ash. <laughs>